Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a drum part quickly in Reaper. Now, the first thing we want to do is download a free plugin called Satala. As we can see right here, we can just download it and install it into Reaper very easily. And it's a very simple but powerful drum machine that works great in Reaper. So download it and install it. Then we're going to open up Reaper. Now, I already have a project set up in here with some bass, pads, and vocals. I want to add a drum part too. Let's see what it sounds like now. So let's create a drum part for this song. We'll start by adding a new track by double clicking over here. Let's bring it to the top and make it bigger and we'll name it drums. Then we're gonna put this track into record and set the input to MIDI for our USB MIDI keyboard. All channels, which is represented down here so you can see what notes I'm playing. Then we'll go over here to the record mode and switch it from record input to record MIDI overdub and choose this option right here. This way we could play our drum part in different passes without erasing the previous pass. And then also I want to quantize on the way in. So I'm going to right click over here, go down here to track record settings and turn on quantize track MIDI recording, which is input quantize. And I'm going to set it to 16th notes. So that's what this song uses. So if I record MIDI on this track, it's going to quantize or put it in time automatically if I'm a bit sloppy in the performance. Then we're going to add the Satala plugin to this track. We'll go to track effects and search Satala. And if we installed it correctly, it should show up right here. Satala, double click it, and it looks like this. Now it comes with stock sounds, but usually you're going to want to use your own. So we can go up here to the view menu and choose Media Explorer. And we could search in our hard drive for the sounds we want to use. I already set up a sound library with all my preferred sounds based on kicks, snares, and so on. But you could also just drag them in from your hard drive. So let's do that. Go to my hard drive. I have a folder down here with all the sounds I want to use. We got a kick, a snare, a hi-hat, an open hat, and claps. Now obviously, you can use as many sounds as you want, or at least 16 with this plugin. But I want to keep it simple and just use these five. So we can just drag these in to this plugin. Choose our kick, grab the kick sample, and drag it in to here. And now it's going to trigger that kick sample instead. Go to our snare, do the same thing. Our hi hat, the open hat. Let's move the hand clap over here. This way it's next to the other ones and drag the claps in to trigger that clap. Now by default, when we drag these in, our hi-hats are not gonna choke each other, meaning the closed hat isn't gonna cut off the open hat. And we want that behavior. So you can right click this one, go to choke and choose the open hi-hat. So now this hi-hat is gonna choke the open hi-hat when it's hit. which is normally how it should work. So now we're ready to program a beat. Let's start by creating an empty MIDI item, and I'm just gonna make it two bars long. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and drag it out. And I'm gonna loop this through the whole song. 
by trimming it from here all the way through. This way the two bar phrase we perform plays through the whole song. Now I also prefer to switch this to the MIDI editor. We could double click it to open it up or just use the inline editor. Select it, type E, and it opens up this editor where we can see the notes as we record them. And like I said, by default, they're gonna quantize. And the kick and snare are in these keys. And we're gonna record them in separate passes. So let's start with the kick and snare. Now let's put down the claps. I come to you and, and one more pass for the hi hats. Now we want to treat each sound separately. We can go to the plugin and adjust their volume and other parameters over here, based on each pad. But it's a lot easier with more control to adjust it with different tracks in Reaper. So let's go over here to the menu and change the audio output from stereo output to 16 channel output, which is one channel per pad. So if we choose this, we're going to get one track for each pad in Satala. Let's choose it. And we can see down here, Reaper created all these tracks. And there's a bunch we don't need, at least for this song. So let's delete from here to here. And now we just have our kick to our claps. And let's rename it to take out the Satala name. So now each sound should be coming out a different track. A snare. A hi-hat. And so on. So we could treat and mix these differently. But we don't need to see all these tracks in the track control panel. We just need to see them in the mixer. So what I like to do is go to view and go down here to track manager where we could see all our tracks at once. And then we'll select the individual outputs from kick to claps and take them out of the track control panel. So we're no longer seeing them here, as there's nothing on the track to even see. We can still mix them in our mixer. And in fact, our drum track doesn't need to show up in the mixer. So we can turn this off over here. So now, in the track control panel, we just see our MIDI. But if we go to the mixer, we see the individual drums we can mix in here. So we can rebalance them, adjust their pan, like this. We can also add effects to each track. Let's compress our kick using rear comp right here. Do the same with the snare by dragging it over. And the same with the claps. And it 
also have to do is add an EQ to each track. Let's add re-EQ. I'm not going to adjust this now. I just like to put it here so it's already on this track when we start each time. Because as you'll see, we're going to save all this so we don't have to do this each time we want to create a drum part. Most of this will be already done. Let's just put an EQ on each track so they start out already there. And keep in mind, we can still edit our drum part. Like the clap, I don't really like it. The first hit, so you can double click it to delete that first hit. Or we could reprogram our kick and snare by just lassoing, right click drag, the kick and snare, and delete them, and just record them again. And just like that, we have a drum part. But like I said, we don't have to do this each time. We could save all this to use it again. So let's go back to the track manager and let's select our drums to the claps. Then go over here and right click and choose save tracks as track template. And we could give this track template a name, drum start, and now it's saved. And let's delete these tracks. And we're back to where we started. The next time we want to create a drum part, we can just right click over here, insert track from template, and choose drum start. And that creates this track in the track control panel. To put it at the top. And it's already set up to be in record with my MIDI input to quantize, to use MIDI overdub mode. And if we go to the mixer, everything in here is already set up. The panning, the volumes, even the effects we created. It's already here when we import this track template. So all we have to do is create that MIDI item, make it two bars long. Let's drag it out to the whole song. Type E to open up the MIDI editor. And now we're ready to record our parts. Of course, you still might want to bring in different drum sounds for different songs, but that's really all you have to do. Everything else should be set up, along with the mixer, and the different modes for recording. So we can go into record and start recording our parts. It. That's how to create a drum part quickly in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.